This week, my Green Bay Packers are playing the New York Giants. This is a game I've had circled on the calendar since the beginning of the season. Not for the football matchup, but because of the food I'm wanting to make for this game. When I think of New York, I think of two things. I think of one, New York style pizza, and two, buffalo wings. Now I know that's Buffalo, New York, and it's different from the Giants, whatever, but it was an excuse for me to combine the two and make my absolute favorite pizza, which is buffalo chicken pizza. Really excited to do this recipe. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to make. Uh, so I'm, I'm super pumped, I've been counting down the days. I've actually made the dough about three days ago. If you're wondering how to make the dough, you can click the link, it should pop up. Um, or you'll find it in the video description below. Without delaying any further, let's get into it. Before we start anything today, we are gonna want to take some time and let a few things come to temperature. So the first thing, this is a pizza stone. This is the secret to making a great pizza at home. What this is gonna do is we're gonna let it sit in a 500 degree oven. Let it sit for at least 30 minutes. The stone's gonna get piping hot, which is what you want. It's gonna give you a nice crispy crust, but still chewy. Um, draws the moisture out of the dough, which is what you want to get that crispy crust. If you're trying to do this on a metal pan, it's not gonna be the same. You're not gonna get the same results. Go invest in a pizza stone. They're fantastic, I use mine way too often. So let's get that oven preheated to 500, get this in there, let it sit for at least a half hour. While this is preheating, what we're going to do is we're going to take the dough out of the fridge and put it on the counter, let it warm up, come to temperature, get room temperature, and by the time the oven is preheated and we've let it sit for a half hour, the dough is gonna be warming up to room temperature and we're gonna be ready to start making our pizzas. While we are waiting for the oven to preheat to 500 and sit for a half hour and the dough to rest, get to room temperature, we're gonna get our chicken prepped for the dish. Now, we're not gonna do anything super crazy with it. Uh, we're just gonna give it a little bit of seasoning, some salt and pepper. We have just a traditional chicken breast. I'm gonna just hit it with some salt and some cracked pepper. While we're doing that, let's get the pan preheated. I'm gonna just do a relatively lower heat. I don't need it to sear super quick on the outside. We're gonna just let it take its time and cook through since we're waiting so long for the oven to preheat anyway. We got nothing but time. Give it a nice flip. And we're gonna do it to the other side. Same thing. While this pan is heating up, I'm gonna just add some avocado oil and let the oil start coming to temperature. This has a really high smoking point. I've used it before in other episodes. So it's a great oil to use when cooking. Once the oil is hot, as you can see right there it is, it's, it's moving around pretty easily. We're gonna just add the chicken breast. Now we're gonna just keep an eye on that. We're gonna just let it cook slowly, get nice and golden brown on the outside and get perfectly cooked throughout. If it's a little undercooked, it's not the end of the world. Keep in mind, we're still gonna be cooking it on our pizza, uh, but cook it most of the way. You don't want it too, too pink in the middle if it is at all. So the chicken is done. I'm letting it sit on a cutting board for a few minutes while we let it cool and then I'll dice it up. I'm gonna try to cut it pretty, pretty fine. I don't like huge, huge chunks of chicken on my pizza. I like it to be pretty thin and kind of mixed in throughout, so you're getting even bites of chicken, buffalo, cheese, and the crust. Uh, but we're gonna just let it sit, let it cool down for a few minutes. And then once that is cooled, once we're at a half hour, I'm gonna get the pizza going, I'm gonna get this cut up. Uh, so that's kind of our next steps. I'll say probably in a few minutes, I'm gonna cut that up and then start the pizza itself. Okay, so we'll start just cutting this up. Like I said, I'm gonna just do pretty, pretty fine pieces of chicken. Still quite hot, but that's all right. Now that we have the chicken all cut up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just add it to a bowl. And to the bowl, I'm gonna be adding my buffalo sauce. 
Now for my buffalo chicken pizza, I use Legend Larry's DOA sauce. Uh, it's my favorite buffalo sauce there is. Has a really nice flavor to match with really good heat, which to me that makes a good buffalo sauce. Anyone can make sauce super, super hot, but can't do it with flavor as easily. So shout out to Legend Larry's for making such great sauce. They're not sponsoring this by any means. Uh, if you know anything about me, you know I go there all the time and I really love their products and I, I love what they have, I love what they do. Um, I can't get enough DOA sauce, I'm almost out of this bottle. So I'm gonna just take my DOA, I'm gonna pour it in, and then I'm gonna stir it up. Let it really mix in there. Might need a little bit more. Let it really soak in, mix up, kind of marinate in it for a little while. I'm also gonna be adding buffalo sauce to the pizza itself. Uh, I can't get enough of the buffalo sauce. I love buffalo. One of my favorite sauces to use, so um, I'm gonna just add it everywhere. Now, if you would prefer to have your chicken blank and just kinda do the sauce on the pizza, completely up to you. I like to add it to both. If you are wondering where you can get this buffalo sauce, the COA or Scary Larry or whatever flavor you wanna try, check out my link in the description below. You can buy it off their website. If you're in the local area, you can actually buy it at a lot of grocery stores. So go check out Legend Larry's DOA sauce. If you don't think you can handle it, get Scary Larry. If you can't handle that, just keep working your way down the chain. There's, all their sauces are great flavor, um, especially their buffalo sauces. I, I absolutely love them. Now that we have our chicken sitting, the oven's been preheated. I actually already made my girlfriend's pizza. so. Uh, everything's preheated, ready to go. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take our ball of dough and I'm gonna put it down in the flour, get a nice coating of flour on the outside. I'm also gonna sprinkle some down on the counter. This will help it avoid from sticking. So we're gonna just kinda lay it out and we're gonna just start kind of pulling it around and what you're gonna do is make a motion where your one hand's kind of just stabilizing the dough and the other is stretching it. Now with the New York style, I'm gonna to try to go as thin as I can and get as much on it as I can. I don't know how thin I'm gonna be able to go without an actual machine and, and throwing it around, but we should be able to get a nice big pizza here. But just slowly take your time, keep working it around. Dough smells great, nice fresh dough. The yeast, you can just smell the, that, that doughiness that you get when you make fresh bread or fresh dough. Pretty good size there. Starting to tear a little bit, so that's probably gonna be the edge of where I can go with it. Before I actually put any toppings or do anything else with it, I actually put it in the oven for a just a minute or so to help cook the underneath. What can happen if you don't do this is you'll put it on your pizza paddle or you'll start making it up here and then it'll actually stick to the paddle and when you're trying to put it into the oven, all the toppings shift, it creates a huge mess. So I've learned through trial and error that this is the best way for me. I take a little fork and I'm just gonna poke a bunch of holes around this helps stop any air bubbles that might be in there from forming while you're cooking. Some places have like that fancy roller. Um, I found that a fork works just as well for me. So just poke a bunch of holes all over the place. I'm gonna take some of my flour, throw it on my pizza dough or my pizza paddle. And then we're gonna cook it on the pizza stone for just a minute or so. As your dough is cooking, make sure you just kinda of keep an eye on it. If a bubble starts to rise, just get in there with that fork and pop it. That way you're not having a huge bubble cook in the middle of your dough. 
Now that we've let it cook in the oven for a minute or so, you can see that underneath you got some cookage already, so it's not gonna stick too much to the pizza paddle. What I'm gonna start with is adding some of my DOA sauce. And then I'm gonna work it around. I use a spoon, if you have one of those uh, basters or whatever the hell they are, you can use that. Just as easy to use the back of a spoon. Then I'm gonna take some sliced cheese. Sliced mozzarella. And we're gonna put it around the entire pizza. Now you're gonna have gaps, that's okay. We're gonna finish it off with some actual, some actual mozzarella. I'm gonna take my chicken, which is soaked in that buffalo sauce. We're gonna just add it with pizza. Spread it out as evenly as you can. It smells great already. Ultimately what you want is you want a bite of chicken in every bite, as well as that cheese and buffalo sauce, which you're gonna have buffalo on every bite, no problem how we spread it out, as well as chicken. You wanna just make sure that you're covering it all. And then, to top it off here, we're gonna add a handful of mozzarella. Probably a little bit more. Personal preference, you might not like as much cheese on your pizza as I do, that's all right. Okay, got it covered around. One final thing that I found I really enjoy on my pizza is a nice handful of Parmesan, maybe not a handful, a pinch of Parmesan. And we're gonna get this in the oven, keep an eye on it. You wanna cook it until it's golden brown on top. I don't have the exact time frame, but it cooks pretty quick because it is a 500 degree oven. So let's get it in the oven and get it cooking. The pizza just came out of the oven. It smells great, it smells like fresh bread, uh, but then you have that spice from the DOA. It looks beautiful. Before you go crazy and just start cutting into it and eating it, let it sit for a few minutes. You want those cheeses to firm back up a little bit, otherwise when you cut it, when you bite into it, you're gonna just lose all of the toppings. It's hard to be patient when it smells this great, but just be patient, let it sit for a few minutes before you actually cut it up. If you don't have one of these racks, super nice to have for this situation. It doesn't, have, it doesn't allow your pizza to get all soggy or a lot of moisture to build up underneath. If you don't have one, before you start cooking, just take the top rack of your oven off and then place it over your counter and let it sit there because it'll allow the pizza to cool without that condensation building up. So we'll let it sit for just a couple minutes, then we're gonna slice in, have a first bite, see how it tastes. It's been resting now for a few minutes I'm gonna just cut it into nice, big slices, just like how a New York style is. Obviously with my pizza stone being a certain size, I can't go as big as a New York size, uh, so it won't be the same effect, but what I do is I just cut it into large slices, that way you can get it to fold. Still very, very hot, I can see that steam rolling off it, so I'm gonna burn my mouth here, but for the sake of first bite, I'm okay with that. So here we go. Whew. Well, my tongue is gone. <laughs> Still really hot, but the dough being fresh makes a huge difference. That crispiness, but chewiness. You taste the chicken right away. The DOA kind of hit me in the back of the, the throat there, which is great, that nice burn. That's what I look for in a nice buffalo sauce, and it complements the pizza so well. Um, the crust, the crust is just so great. I really love how, it's, it's a labor of love, uh, but how easy the recipe is to make, but how much people appreciate it. Homemade pizza is a game changer for you, your friends, if you're having anyone over, make homemade pizza, you're gonna surprise the hell out of them every time. It's, it's easy, but it's just 
one of those things that it's such a labor of love that no one wants to do it anymore. Uh, I encourage you to give it a try. Make this, uh, make a pepperoni version of this, whatever. It doesn't have to be buffalo, but give it a try. It's, it's really good um, and it, you get a sense of pride from making it yourself and, and knowing that you needed the dough by yourself and this is all from you and you have maybe six ingredients in there. There's no preservatives or anything crazy in there. Just very natural stuff. Uh, so I encourage you to give it a try but I'm gonna go eat my pizza now and enjoy watching some football. And that is gonna do it for me today. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. I hope you're gonna replicate it at home. If you do, please send me a picture of it. I love seeing things that are made by the people who are watching the show. It's rewarding to me. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. You can do so below. Uh, give this video a like. It helps us grow the channel and helps more people see our content. You can also follow me on any of my social medias, The Green Bay Guy on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or you can add me on Snapchat at The GB Guy. Really, until next time, thank you all again for watching and Go Pack Go!